fact of scientific research, but one that's been shown over and over again uh, over the past three or four decades, that high confidence does not always imply high accuracy. So I believe the task of a perception identification memory perception expert at trial is to describe to the jury uh, the scientifically understood circumstances under which high confidence shouldn't be taken to apply high accuracy. That is, explain to the jury circumstances under which, contrary to intuition, uh, a uh, witness like Lori Panic, who says, absolutely, that's a guy I'll never forget him, may not necessarily be correct. Uh, the task of the attorney who hires the expert is then to demonstrate that the facts of the case at hand then mirror these scientifically understood circumstances. So let me talk a little bit more about this case that I'm using as an example. I want to talk about the uh, events that led up to uh, Lori Panich's in-court identification of Mr. Jackson. Uh, to begin with, uh, she was walking home from work uh, along a relatively poorly lit street in Southern California. Um, she was suddenly approached by somebody, uh, she was threatened with a knife, and she was robbed. The person then disappeared into the night. Uh, she called the police, they didn't take her cell phone. Uh, she provided a very vague description of a black male. He sort of maybe in his 20s, and that was about it. Um, a possible spot suspect uh, was obtained in the, in the form of Mr. Jackson, uh, who was just sort of wandering around, minding his own business, uh, a few blocks away. Another police unit that was racing around searching for potential uh, suspects uh, saw him, uh, picked him up, brought him back to the scene of the crime, and in uh, a show up procedure, show up procedures where a witness sees one person, asked if that, is that the person you saw or not, she identified uh, Mr. Jackson as the man who loved her. But she expressed relatively low confidence in her identification. She said, yeah, I, I, he sort of looks like the guy, um, but I'm not absolutely positive. Um, two weeks later, uh, the police evidently wanted to sort of dot their I's and cross their T's, uh, put Mr. Jackson into a live lineup. Uh, Ms. Panish looked at the lineup. Uh, she picked Jackson uh, from it. And she expressed a somewhat greater degree of confidence in her selection. Yeah, that is the guy. I'm pretty sure that that's him. That's what I just picked from the lineup. And then there's the identification in court. That's him. I'm absolutely positive. I'll never forget that face as long as I live. As you can see here, uh, what is going on is that Ms. Panich's confidence in her identification is getting stronger and stronger over time. Why might this be, one might ask. She didn't, she had no videotape of the crime she could see. It couldn't be that her memory of what happened to her was getting more accurate, and yet her confidence was uh, becoming stronger. Let's analyze this event in a very sort of rough way from the perspective of what elements of human perception and memory uh, are relevant. We'll start with the original uh, mugging. What happened? What was going on? at the time that this crime took place. Um, well, Panich had a relatively poor memory for the assailant's appearance, at least as uh, reflected in the pretty vague description of him that she initially gave to the police. And analyzing the circumstances of the crime, it's not surprising that she would have had a pretty poor memory of what the guy looked like to begin with. Uh, there are two factors that uh, collectively work to diminish her ability to accurately perceive and memorize the appearance of the guy who was uh, robbing her, uh, which I break just sort of for convenience into what I call environmental factors and witness factors. So environmental factors, it was dark. She didn't have much of a chance. She, there, was, there were very few lights in the vicinity. Uh, also, she had a very brief time. Uh, that she was actually, that she actually had his face in her field of view. Uh, in terms of witness factors, uh, there was a likely lack of uh, attention to what the person looked like on her part, and I'll get into the reasons for this in a little bit. Uh, partly, there was a lack of attention because her attention was probably focused on this very vicious looking knife that he was using, which as a matter of fact, she was able to just 
satisfactorily well. Um, she was uh, under a great deal of stress and fear. Anybody would be under these circumstances, and she stated pretty explicitly that she was pretty damn scared when this guy popped out of the knife and, uh, and robbed her. Uh, there are cross-racial factors. Ms. Panich is Caucasian. The assailant was uh, African-American, as was Mr. Jackson. Uh, and uh, that also, as we'll see in a little bit, diminishes a person's ability to accurately memorize uh, somebody's appearance by identifying them later on. So all of these things led to the vague description that she originally gave to the police. It kind of makes sense. She gives a vague description. Why might that be? Well, she just didn't have very much memory of what the guy looked like. Obviously, her description is going to be pretty vague and generic. Um, next, there's the show-up procedure. As I said, he's brought to her in handcuffs, as a matter of fact, and popped in front of her, and she's asked, is this guy who robbed you uh, or not? Um, so her expectation, yeah, here's this guy, there's not very many people here, but this guy is wandering around in the neighborhood. I can't rule him out. There's nothing in my memory that uh, is discrepant from her appearance. Not surprising, since there wasn't much in her memory to begin with. Um, so she can't rule him out. She has sort of expectations that here's this guy, he just happens to be in the vicinity. Hey, the cops have got him. They suspect me some handcuffs. Uh, Dad fosters her inclination to say, yeah, that's the guy. Um, but there is a more uh, subtle uh, and yet equally insidious uh, element of this situation, namely that uh, when she identifies him in the show-up procedure, she's able to see what he looks like pretty well. Uh, and he can use, she can use his appearance that's right there in front of her during the show-up procedure as a means of reconstructing her memory of the actual assault in such a way that the demonstrably hazy memory she originally had of the assailant is replaced by a stronger memory of Mr. Jackson. Uh, in other words, Jackson's appearance constitutes what we know is called post-event information, information that a person can acquire one way or another after an event is over uh, and can use to supplement uh, or enrich their memory for the event itself. So here, uh, Jackson's appearance, uh, really available to her during the show procedure, uh, acts in that fashion. Uh, the, so the altered memory now includes a stronger uh, memory uh, by Jackson as the uh, mother. And guess what that is going to do later on? In the lineup, her identification of Jackson is based on this memory. Uh, Jackson's appearance in the lineup constitutes more post event information. Think about it. Uh, at the time of the show, she reconstructed her memory, so she now has a very good memory of Mr. Jackson, or a relatively good memory of Mr. Jackson, as the person who was there. So, of course, uh, when she sees him in the lineup, he's going to match the description, she, the appearance she now has in her memory of the mother, and she'll pick him up, and what's more, uh, she'll uh, express uh, more confidence. Uh, that was him, because the uh, memory is stronger, the match between his appearance and his memory is stronger as well. Uh, the, uh, his appearance in the lineup, once she's picked him up, constitutes yet more uh, post event information. There's another view she has of Mr. Jackson that she can use to further uh, reconstruct her memory of what the assailant looks like so he comes to resemble Mr. Jackson even more. Uh, over the next six months, she thinks a lot about the mugging, she talks about it with her friends. Uh, the memory she uh, thinks about, talks about, uh, includes uh, Jackson's appearance as a uh, mugger. Uh, so her memory of Jackson as the mugger continues uh, to strengthen in, in this process. And so at trial, she has a very strong memory of Jackson as the mugger, much stronger than her original memory of the actual mugger, whoever he might have been. Uh, and uh, that underscores her testimony in court. That's him I'll never forget that face. I want to say, I want to make one sort of side comment here. Um, what I've been describing in this example, and what I'll go on to try to bolster with other examples and um, pertinent research, is that identifications can be unreliable, and often are unreliable because of the circumstances under which crimes take place and under which subsequent identifications take place. This does not mean 
that I'm trying to conclude that the person, the defendant, is an innocent guy. Jackson may well have been the guy who committed the murder. Who knows? The strongest conclusion that I would like to make following the kinds of comments I've made here or testimony I've given before that sort of corresponds to it is not that we're dealing with an innocent defendant here, but rather that the identification is unreliable and should not be used one way or another as evidence either in favor of or against the defendant's uh, guilt. Uh, I say that because it's true, um, and I say that in part because it's just on the unlikely event that there are any prosecutors in this audience. Don't bug me uh, in the future on cross-examination by saying I'm going around trying to think and everybody is innocent. That's not true. All right. Um, so the bottom line uh, is that when two things are true, high confidence shouldn't be taken as an indication of accuracy. Uh, the first thing is that the witness has a poor original memory of the details of the event, including the perpetrator's appearance. And second, there's some subsequent bias in the form of uh, post-event information, like right? the appearance of the suspect in an identification procedure, which leads the witness to reconstruct his or her memory of the event such that the reconstruction